joined now in the studio to discuss this by the leader of UKIP, Gerard Batten. Uh, welcome back to The Daily Politics. Well, you've heard uh, Ben Page saying it's fallen quite sharply, actually, down the agenda to fifth or sixth place. A spontaneous concern about immigration has fallen and the country, changing all the time, is becoming more liberal on lots of issues. So it's lost for you, isn't it? Um, I think that what he was saying is that actually other things have replaced been people's concerns with the more immediate, like Brexit, like the NHS. So it's just moved down the chart. And uh, so I still think it's a big issue with people because we know that immigration isn't controlled. Basically, the idea that we have a, an immigration policy is, is ludicrous. We have an open door policy. Uh, we have at least, according to the ONS figures, 600,000 illegal migrants. It's probably more like a million. It could be anything. Nobody really knows anyway. Right. Well, if so nobody I, knows, you can't really be that specific uh, about the figures. But how go... does it impact UKIP? I mean, do you accept that for UKIP, immigration was very much a central I plank? I think it still is. Uh, it still is for most people. It still is for us. It's one of our uh, core policies that we should control it. And, of course, you can't control it if you're in the European Union. And if we had this uh, cust uh, an A customs uh, arrangement with the EU, we still wouldn't be able to control it because we can't control your who comes in and doesn't come into the country under EU rules. Right, so why is no one really voting for UKIP? Your vote collapsed mm. in the general election of the 126 councillors mm. elected last time um, when these council elections were fought. Um, you've now got half that number, less than half, 60. Mm. So, I mean, well, no one's listening to what you're well, saying. I think there's two reasons for that, if I can answer your question. Number one is I think an awful lot of people thought that UKIP's job was done after the referendum. And secondly, we spent the last two years shooting ourselves in the foot. Uh, so I can understand why people may have thought it, uh, you know, that it wasn't as an attractive option as it was. And my job is to try and make it an attractive option again. Right. I mean, it's true, isn't it, that many people still feel that immigration is an important policy that the government needs to grapple with. And to some extent, UKIP put it right on the agenda and they feel the job's done. Well, I, I don't know if the, the job's done. I mean, what we've seen with Windrush is that something has definitely gone wrong, so the job is definitely not done. We need to now come back. I think it's really positive that people are now starting to make the positive case for immigration. One of the issues that affects uh, Oxfordshire, for example, is we can't get the scientists we need to staff the labs in Oxfordshire because of current immigration policy. The idea that we've got an open-door immigration policy is, is not correct. In fact, I, I think most people out there are, are very reasonable. If someone is an illegal migrant, no one is saying that we should just have a completely open door policy, even the Liberal Democrats who are very positive about immigration. But what we are saying is that if we've got a skill shortage, we should be making it easy for people to come. And more than that, I think what Windrush is showing us is we've got a real problem with the three million EU citizens who are here contributing, you know, they've got families here. Three million people are going to have to go through what the Windrush generation had to go through. Do we really have faith that the Home Office knows what it's doing? Right. Why do you say they will have to go through what the Windrush generation are going through? They're, that's not the same, is it, as illegal immigration? Well, actually, it's harder. No, no, not at all. No, and neither is the Windrush generation. Right. They, they were here legally and they were promised well, that they could stay. That's exactly the same as the three million. Right. What do you say to that? I mean, can you understand the concerns of EU citizens who are living here, the rights that they will have afterwards, after, if you take the government's line on it, a mistake, a massive mistake over people who did have a right to be here, the Windrush generation? What we've always said is that there can be a deal between the EU citizens living here, they can stay, they can have the rights they've got, all we need to do is to know who they are and the same would apply to our citizens in the EU. Uh, and that number was vastly overestimated, by the way. I was putting out a figure of about 1.2, 1.3 million during the referendum campaign. I've seen figures recently which suggest there's only about 800,000 UK citizens on the continent. So they're going to get a much better deal than we are because there's far more of them. Right. How bad is it going to be for you in Thursday's local elections? Well, um, I inherited nothing when I took over on the 17th of February. There was no election campaign. Nothing had been planned. Uh, it was a complete disaster. So the mere fact that there are 554 candidates means there's 554 more than there would have been if I hadn't taken over and the party hadn't backed me. Right. The way I'm going to judge success, if I may say, mm. is yes, we want to retain seats that we're fighting, we want to win some more, uh, but it's about, for me, the percentage of the vote. Are we going back up? In the 41 local council elections uh, 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 prior to April, we got 7% of the vote as an average. So if I get between 5 and 7% of the vote where we stand in this election, I will take that as a positive. And if you don't, do you think it's over for you, Kip? 
Uh, no, I don't, because I think that there is a long-term fight here. Even if we do have this mythical deal and get out of the EU, we're not really going to be leaving. There are going to be lots of constraints, and there's going to be a fight going on beyond that to actually get our real in, uh, sovereignty and independence back. Right. You say you've been left with nothing in terms of mm. organisation for these local elections, but you yourself aren't even prepared to stay on as leader. It's harder, hardly no, a vote it's... of confidence, uh, um, because it seems to be an admission that UKIP is in decline that, that's, permanently. That's not fair representation. Joe, what I said, I was asked to step up as the interim leader. Mm. I had no personal leadership ambitions. I was quite happy to serve under a competent leader. Unfortunately, we didn't have one in Henry Bolton. I offered to serve as the interim leader for three months in order to get the thing back on track. People were saying, that's not long enough. Uh, will you stand as the leader? I said, I don't want to do four years. I'll do a year so we get the party back on track. And at the end of that, we have another election campaign. At the end of that year, if I'm really enjoying it and it's going well, I might decide to stand. But I'm not doing this for, for my personal aggrandisement. I'm doing it because I want UKIP to survive, because I believe in what we represent. Well, on the issue of UKIP's survival, um, former party leader Nigel Farage warned that UKIP will be finished if it goes down the road of mm. becoming an anti-Islam party. Is he right? Um, I, I, I'm not an anti... I know what you're trying to say here, but I'm not an anti-Islam. I draw attention to the problems that the Islamic ideology brings to our country, and I think that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. And I'd be surprised if Nigel didn't agree with that. Right, but you have made some comments recently, um, as you seem to know. I mean, you, you said the reason that there is this degree of anti-Semitism mm. in the Labour Party, in my view, in your view, yeah. is because it very much depends on Muslim voters in inner cities, and mm. the Muslim religion is inherently anti-Semitic, and therefore they are pandering to a certain section of Londoners. Do you stand I by didn't that? Say of Londoners, I said of the electorate in okay. urban well, do you stand by that? Absolutely. And in fact, after well, I said that... Well, if that's not anti-Islam, oh, oh, I, I don't know what is. anti-Islamic ideology. I have nothing against that individuals. Is. I take people as I find them. But the ideology of Islam is inherently anti-Semitic. What that do you say? That is complete rubbish. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm the first uh, MP of Palestinian descent, descent. I've lived in Jordan. We've lived in Egypt. I, I know... <coughs> uh, I, I'm Christian myself, but I, I know uh, plenty of people who are... Uh, I'm just... I'm, Bowled over by what you've just said. Well, that is absolutely maybe not you should, true. Maybe you should read that the Quran and the Hadith. I actually and have. Educate yourself I actually have. I, have you? Um, yes. I'd be surprised if if there are many Muslim people out there who agree with what you're saying. I actually think it's a peaceful religion. Uh, what you may be talking about are extremists, extremists within a certain uh, what, ideology, and there are extremists yeah, in are, all they ideologies. Are, they are literalists. Including your own. They're not extremists. They are literalists who take it literally. A lot of Muslims don't thank goodness, but a lot of people do take it literally. So you accept it's an extremist faction that, that isn't representative of the whole of Islam. I accept that it's a literalist interpretation of certain teachings. But you have talked about Muslim voters mm. in general in inner cities and the Muslim religion as a whole, that it's inherently anti-Semitic. Where did you find that in the Quran? Uh, well, in the Hadith, if you want me to quote it to you, take it from the Prophet himself, he says, Judgment Day will not come until the Muslims fight the Jews. And the Jews will hide behind the rocks and the trees, and the rocks and the trees will cry out, O Muslim, O faithful servant of Allah, there is a Jew hiding behind me, come and kill him. And I don't he, know how anti-Semitic you need to get. Unbelievable. Look, there are, there are, there awful, are, there are, there are also passages in the Bible that are equally ridiculous. I mean, it's a allegory. The vast the majority of the vast not. majority of Christians would not agree with half the passages in the, the Bible. There's nothing in the Gospels that have equivalence. Of, of, there's nothing in the Gospels which Christians live by, which is of any way that Christians that. live by. And I would argue that the vast majority of people who live by modern Islam don't live by those kind of well, passages. Well, that's a relief. Either. Thank do, you. Do you think this that. will win you votes in inner well, cities? It's not about winning votes. It's about saying what I believe is true. And oh. if I'm asked the question, I try to give an honest and truthful answer. And after I made those comments on the Peston program, mm. I looked at the comments that came in, and they were overwhelmingly supportive of what I said. Right, from who? Well, on Twitter, on people who rang the office, on e emails. Right, I mean... I had very few negative the, feedback. The, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, says, I am appalled at the ignorance that Gerald Batten appears to have shown when speaking about the faith that I mm. and hundreds of thousands of British Muslims practice. As a minority, I know what it's like to be different. Sajid Karim, Conservative MEP, the vast majority of Britons find his, your views on Muslims repugnant and reminiscent of another era where a whole religious community was stigmatised and targeted in this very same way. Do you have any regret yes, about what no, you said? I, I mean, these are, well, you know, high profile... Well, what I would say to, if anybody doesn't know the truth of this, go and buy yourself a copy of the Quran and the Hadith and read it. Don't take my word for it. Read it yourself. Research a bit. Gerald Batten, thank you for coming in.